China loves skyscrapers. It's built more in the past 30 years than America did throughout the entire 20th century. If you look up the top 10 tallest buildings in the world, half of them are on the Chinese mainland. Shanghai has been a prime example of such fascination. When the country embraced reform and opening up in 1979, business with the outside world grew. And China needed to attract global companies and investors. So in 1990, it decided to develop this patch of land in Shanghai into a new economic icon. People would want to build higher because they wanted their city to be more prestigious than another city. This is Marshall Strabela, the chief architect for this building, the Shanghai Tower. Since the dawn of civilization, height has been synonymous with power and stability. A little bit of nationalistic pride. Most people didn't know where Dubai was until they built the Burj Khalifa. But there won't be another Shanghai-style skyscraper boom in China anymore. In April, the country announced it will stop greenlighting new projects taller than 500 meters. When I heard that, I said, wow. And China will also strictly vet projects over 250 meters tall. And I thought about it and I said, you know, it's a pretty intelligent thing to do. Because while skyscrapers can be good for image, they are also expensive to build. Operating costs are high, they pose challenges for fire safety, and overall, they just aren't very cost effective. To go from 500 to 600, this incremental cost is exponential. These buildings cost almost three times as much per square footage as a 20-story building. Tall buildings are also vulnerable to economic shocks, since planning and building them can take years. Ten years is not uncommon for these large buildings. A project could start at the peak of an economic boom, but end up plunging investors into debt. But still, throughout the world, there are those who are willing to sacrifice finances in the pursuit of superlatives. The tallest twin towers, the tallest occupied single-use office tower, the tallest residential building, the tallest left-handed blue-shaped oval building. It's getting kind of ridiculous. Enter buildings with spires. If I put mousse in my hair and my hair sticks up, am I taller? Here's an example. In the 1920s, builders in New York were competing to build the world's tallest building. The battle was on between the Chrysler building and the Manhattan Company building. So the Chrysler architect secretly built a spire hidden inside the building during construction, which he then revealed in October 1929. That made the building the tallest in the world, despite the spire serving no practical purpose whatsoever. The stock market crashed the next day. But hey, spires became the new fashion. That's the architect himself, by the way. When my old boss, Adrian, was doing Jin Mao, there was a discussion because the Patronus Towers finished about the same time. So the Jin Mao client said, well, could we make Jin Mao taller by putting a spire on the top of the building? And our answer is, yes, of course you can do that. And they did drawings and renderings. And everybody kind of said, yeah, it doesn't look as good. Let, let's kind of keep it where it is. It looks better at that height which is a very powerful thing for someone to do. That's not an easy decision to make. We could be the world's tallest building if we do this, but we're going to focus on what's right for our city. In the 21st century, the human desire for height remains unchanged. And the main battleground for the skyline has moved to China. In 2018, 143 buildings over 200 meters were built globally, and more than 60% of these were in China. But are Chinese cities, especially lower tier ones, so desperately in need of new office space that the only option is up into the sky? Data shows the average vacancy rate for offices across 17 major Chinese cities reached more than 20% last year. Therefore, more and more people suggest that China rethink its skyscraper boom. To some citizens and professionals, there's a cultural aspect to the issue as well. 
，现在各个地方的这种高楼啊，一个设计比一个高，但是我觉得这个也还得跟周围的环境能不能搭配起来，不能光是往上面建就行了，对吧 ？Here's their case. The generic skyscraper make many cities look like photocopies of each other and stand as missed opportunities to amplify the local culture. I think the cities need to look at their city and say, "Our city's beautiful. It doesn't need this spire sticking up to show off how successful we are." You're here talking to me about tall buildings, so I think that question should be put back on you. Do you find tall buildings that interesting, or do you find them kind of wasteful, or how do you feel about them?